Well, hello everyone and welcome to our webinar, RFID and cycle counting, increased speed at lower cost. Two housekeeping points before we get started. The session is being recorded and you will receive a link over the next few days by email. Secondly, please submit your questions throughout the presentation in the Q&A section, and we'll be addressing these towards the end of the webinar. Barcodes Group is a leading provider of barcode, mobile computing, and RFID solutions. Our solution platforms bring together hardware, software, supplies, and support. With RFID now delivering inventory accuracy verification in the high 90s, the solution is quickly becoming the most efficient and effective means of cycle counting, saving companies countless labor hours of manual reading with handholds. To discuss how RFID increases inventory accuracy and visibility, we couldn't ask for two better speakers to explore this topic with you. Matt Smith is Director of Engineering at Smart Label Solutions, or SLS, a company he joined five years ago. SLS has one focus, leveraging RFID technology to drastically improve customer supply chain visibility and efficiency with aggressive return on investment. With over 15,000 successful read points implementations, the company's scalability in manufacturing and implementation of RFID solutions is unmatched. As a senior solutions architect with Barcodes Group, Chris Fazellos leads pre-sales discussions with AIDC customers. Focusing on RFID solutions, he's in charge of project discovery and definition and defines system architecture, including hardware, software, tag, and service components. Thanks for joining us today, Matt and Chris. We'll be covering a lot over the next 30 minutes. Matt and Chris will show you, with help of a video, how much quicker cycle counting can work for you using RFID and cover why the current state of the technology is so much different than just a few years ago. They will dig into other RFID applications that are commonly combined with cycle counting and tell you how we can help you evaluate if this technology is right for you. Chris, please take it away. Great. Thank you all for joining today. I appreciate your time. Uh, what we want to do uh, to start off is launch a poll within the meeting uh, to get a little bit of information about where everyone is at with RFID. So please go ahead and take a moment to fill out that poll. In the meantime, as an introduction, cycle counting, of course, is, is oftentimes a daily uh, activity for so many businesses. Um, and, and frequently they're doing this either with barcode technology or even by hand. Um, even with firms that have a very high level of accuracy, uh, that still is a, an intense labor cost. There's a lot of time spent in cycle counting. Uh, where RFID can really, uh, and especially with the, the solution we're gonna show you today, the increase in efficiency uh, even if you have extremely high accuracy, can be uh, can return an incredible ROI. Um, and and there's a case study. Oh, and and I guess well, the poll is already finished, so we'll just uh, take a look at these results. Uh, it looks like right now the majority of the attendees uh, do not currently have RFID implemented. So this for many of you, this is something you're exploring. And it looks like um, maybe about 20% of everybody does have some level of of RFID implemented, uh, and and a couple of folks are here just to just to check it out because we've got a couple. It doesn't really seem to apply, uh, but perhaps after you guys look a little bit, you'll see um, that perhaps there is some benefit for you guys. And so, so Chris, I'll I'll, uh, I'll kind of discuss some of um, the case study we've done in the past on our on, on cycle counting and how we how we leverage that. Um, so we did a case study uh, a couple of years back for a retail customer that. Um, that, that had to do an annual cycle count at the end of the year, right? Um, high volume, you know, 9 million tags in inventory. Um, we were able to do that cycle count with four devices and reading 2.8 million tags per hour, right? And so saving six labor days, reducing that inventory down to one day um, uh, and, and, and giving them that high, you know, well above 99% accuracy of that cycle count. 
All right, next little video. So, uh, so you've seen there kind of a, uh, a, a, a an example of how we would use the the M800. This is here in our uh, our uh, manufacturing facility. Um, as you see, it's a it's a battery powered device. You pick it up with your fork truck. It allows you to raise and lower that device so that you don't have to worry if I have, you know, some of the facilities we go into are 40 foot tall racks, you know. Um, so I can raise that as high as I can lift my fork truck, which which should be to my highest rack. Um, the battery last, uh, the, the battery system that we use lasts up to 10 hours. Um, and then if I have use cases where I need to go more than 10 hours, I can add a second battery to that to, um, to, to, to kind of extend the life of that, right? It's a hot swappable unit. So I can, I can add one more battery and then just continuously run that device if needed. Now, with that being said, most of the time this use case, it only takes me an hour, maybe maybe two to, to cycle count my facility. So I, I don't need necessarily to, to have that second device. So we with this unit sold with just a, a singular battery uh, for the system, but then you know we can upgrade obviously. Um, so you hey Max, this, can can sorry, I ask Chris? as you're going through there? So you said you mentioned you can uh, lift it up at different heights, but what would you say? Um, how high would you get off of a standard? You know, without the lifted position, because you do get more than one tier, most likely, right? Correct, and that depends on what we're trying to do. Are we reading at item level? Or are we reading at case level? Or are we reading at pallet, pallet level? And is that a very dense, hard to read product, or is it pretty easy, right? Um, with a, a you know pallet level, very easy to read. I'm going to read up to 18 feet just from the floor, right? So I'm going to read very high, and I don't even have to lift it up. Um, if I'm going to item level and it may be very dense, I'm going to be about a you know eight to ten foot you know section of that rack that I'll cover. So typically two rack bays, um, and we'll typically put it in the middle of those two, run it down, and then raise it up um, between the next two, and then come back come on back down. But it does vary between the use case, obviously, with different. Um, with different use cases being, you know, harder to read or easier to read. The the M800, uh, how we kind of look at cycle counting with the M800, Chris mentioned this earlier, saving on the labor days, right? A lot of times we go to facilities and they say, hey, I have, I'm 98% accurate, right? My, my inventory is 98% accurate. I have a team that goes and they cycle count every day um, and they get through my inventory, you know, you know, they get through it once a week, once a month, once a, once a quarter, whatever that may be, however great that facility may be. And we look at that and, and, and to us, that's very inefficient. Yes, they're 98% accurate, but they spent 98% of their time counting things that are right. So with the M800, when we deploy that to customers, we say, hey, go take that device, go drive it around your warehouse for an hour. And then at the end of that, you're gonna have, you know, I'm gonna tell you, hey, you expected to have this and this is what I had. This is your variance. Now go send a small team to verify, hey, what we didn't see it, did you see it, right? Is it there? Um, and then verify that, that that inventory is not available. So instead of having a large team to go cycle count or even a small team that's cycle counting every day, now I can take and, and be very targeted in how I go and check that cycle count for accuracy. And I spend a very, uh, you know, I send a small team to go count that small percentage of, of variance. So the, the M800 really integrates well into the full, uh, you know, we have the SLS view software suite um in which we are you know you know leveraging shipping verification inventory management receiving um you know pick and pack all sorts of different things um uh, but cycle counting is a small piece of that that you know put together with everything else creates a very good inventory management solution 
um, and, and we can provide that um, as well as the tags um, for the solution and the, the service and the support. So this is something that we've been noticing in the industry, and, and we'd like to think that SLS and Barcode Nick are a part of this, that RFID is, is really coming into its own. Uh, RFID has actually been around for quite a while. And it's 2005 uh, that, that Walmart started uh, some of its trials and, and started to implement some mandates for their suppliers for RFID. Uh, but in general, it's taken a while to get off the ground. What SLS has done, uh, is, is really focused on having purpose-built solutions. So just like this mobile pallet reader, and of course there's some other solutions such as the dock door readers and the uh, conveyor readers, uh, this, because they're purpose-built, instead of trying to have a solution that's one size fits all, it is uh, very controlled and very um, purpose-built and very successful at, at those applications. And I think that's part of what's going on. People now are also understanding what you can do. Um, obviously also the, the math is a little different now for the adoption of RFID, both the cost of RFID as well as the cost of labor going up, right? So that's another part of the equation. Um, and of course, you know, it's, it's, it's giving a much higher level of, of accuracy for many customers and minimally, even if you have accuracy, as we have already discussed, it's absolutely uh, more, more time efficient. And that's where we've really gotten to, right, Chris, is the, the, you know, in 2010, 2011, 2012, we were all putting things together to try to make solutions work for customers, right? Um, and doing different things like, you know, in cycle counting situations, we're attaching antennas to forklifts, right? And that was where everybody pushed us. Hey, I want to, I want to, I want to put an antenna on my forklift. So while he's doing his day-to-day -day activity, I'm cycle counting. Well, now most people lease their forklifts or they don't, they, you know, the, the, you know, they don't want to maintain that, right? I don't want to have to go through the process of doing that and, and outfitting a, a forklift with, with RFID equipment for it to then be broken or may not be accessible. At the time that I want to cycle count, so that's where we we went to. We we looked at drones for a second, and then we ran into some issues there with OSHA, and then we then we went toward the the, the M800, which was a um, is is a standalone solution. I can any of my material handlers can grab that, right? If I'm using the SLS View Suite, we put a we typically like to put a tablet on the forklift to do shipping verification, receiving, and other other functions inside the building. That same tablet is what drives this device. So. Whoever gets done shipping early for the day, hey, you're going to go cycle count the building today, right? If that's what the, if that's the use case, right? So I don't, I'm not required to have a specific unit that goes goes and does this operation. It can be, you know, you know, we 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 go and pick it up with whatever. You can pick it up with a pallet jack, right? Um, we've even built these out to, you know, we've done carts in situations where you don't want to do a pallet, right? It's not maybe not an industrial environment. We have we have solutions around that. Um, so so that is that's. We, the, the, the solutions are there now. And, and that's really the biggest thing to really hit on is in 2010, 2011, we were trying to make things work. Now it's, there's a lot of repeatable, scalable solutions that we've done in many industries and verticals that are ready to deploy. It's just, when do we start, right? Um, it's not, hey, let's go design you a solution. It's, oh, this is what you do. This is the solution that we have for that. Well, it's born out of the experiments and this is <laughs> the successful experiment, right? This is the end solution that came together. And we're always learning. We're always adding more, right? <laughs> well, and lean inventory. I think this is something that that we see a lot. Is and and of course everyone's feeling this now with the supply chain, right? Everyone runs very lean. The world today is is making you know trying to maintain the minimal stock levels possible uh, to maintain you know, and that's it's part of a a large movement that's been going on for you know probably twenty years and getting to the point where just in time delivery. Uh, became the the normal the normal method of doing business, but of course supply chain issues is even more critical now uh, than it was a few years ago to have accurate inventory counts. I mean, you're seeing that too, right, Matt? Um, a lot of folks they're trying to solve for um, just making sure that they have product uh, and 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 they're not you know out of stock. Well, yeah, and, that, and a lot of the retail facilities are doing that direct shipment from store, right? So they're 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 getting an order in and they're shipping it from the closest store to the end user, right, to the customer, and 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 making sure if I if I if I think I have this here and I tell the customer, oh yeah, I'll ship this out today, and I don't have it, I have an issue, right? 
So knowing my on-hand inventory is super valuable. Right. Well, and, and thinking about it, I, I know I had mentioned, uh, mentioned it before, <clears throat> you know, when you're doing that video, here, here's a barcode device. Uh, what do you think it would take to go and count, you know, just your, your stock room that you were rolling around with the M800 with, with a barcode scanner? Would you estimate a few hours of time with comparison with 10 hours of time, a couple guys? Yeah. I mean, and, you know, this is a, this is an RFID manufacturing facility. So, so my, 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 my piece quantity count here is, is probably fairly low to, to, to most of the, most of the, most of our end users out there, but yeah, hours for sure. Easily. Right. And, and also, I guess I would say here's an RFID handheld, um, but considering what type of inventory and space you might have, um, even, even this technology, I think, uh, I mean, could you make a quick comparison? Because I'd say you'd have to get closer, you'd have yep. to move slower, um, and and I think also just the ability to read every tag on a rack, right? I mean, this is less consistent. I mean, these are great, and they're part of the solutions that we definitely provide, but they don't really compare with the M800. For sure, and they have their place, right? We use them a lot in retail stores, you know, on the floor, right? Um, they can be used in, in like you, exactly what you said, I can scan the racks with those, but how do I scan the rack at 40, or at 40 feet or even at 12 feet, right? Right. Um, especially a lot of those racks have metal grates, right? So that's going to interfere with the RF and, and, and the ability to read those. Um, and then some places in industrial environments are forklift traffic only, right? They don't want a person walking down that aisle, especially in the automotive industry, which we deal with a lot here in Michigan. So, so that is, that's one thing we've always ran into. Um, and you're relying on the user to use it correctly, right? And that's, that, that's the other side of it. The antenna technology that we leverage and use in multilinear wave and, tech, and antenna technology um, is very unique in our industry and, and something that we, we, we use in a lot of our products, but that, that antenna technology allows us to read a tag in all orientations, right? Um, so using, you know, depending on the device you're using, you're gonna use either a linear antenna or a circular polarized antenna which will require you to do one, some sort of a, a motion with your hand to get different orientations and different reads, right? Um, whereas, you know, our device, it's pick it up, you're gonna get the same performance every time you pick it up and we're, we're, we're able to run a higher power on that. Um, and we're, we're able to read, you know, you know, where we use those same antennas and read at a dock door, very, very controlled in a very, you know, a small 10 foot by nine foot space. I take that out to cycle counting and I can read out to 50 or 60 feet because I'm using a different configuration. So I can, I can really make sure I'm reading everything in my inventory much faster, much more controlled. Right. Um, so I, I did see a couple questions here that popped through. Would this be a good time to, to jump into a couple of those, Evan? Yeah, go ahead. If you see, so, see so some that apply to what you're talking about, absolutely. Yeah, so the the one that's related to software, right? And and how uh, so 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 Mike asked this question: How do you keep from double counting, right? So we are double counting. We're reading things, you know, um, depending on how you configure your reader. I'm going to read it, you know, several times a, a you know a minute, probably, right? I'll read. I'm going to read it once a second, and how we typically configure a reader. Um, I take that and I I use software to to only send me the valuable data, right? Um, in all of our solutions, the dock doors, the tunnels, and all of that, right? So, um, if I cycle count a facility in a, and and I want to, I, I only want to send that tag once, right? I want to make sure I stay within the bandwidth of that facility. We work in a lot of automotive areas, a lot of industrial environments where those networks aren't super robust. I don't want to send, you know, 30 tag reads a second or you know, 300 tag reads a second over the network, right? Um, and then do that hundreds of times for each tag, right? Uh, so we're, 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 we do some things on the end, on the, on the software side of that to only send you one tag read. We may read it a few times, but we filter it off at the reader. That's only getting sent through the, to the device once. Um, and then I seen another question there related to retail and how we would do that from uh, item to case to pallet. So our software package and, and a lot of other um, companies out there are pushing the GS1 standard and we, we, we are um, wholeheartedly behind that. And it is it is designed to to be able to leverage different packs and quantity or different packs pack outs for for products and different standards for different things, right? If I have a GRAI, um, which is a GS1 standard, that's a returnable pallet or um, a tote, right? If I have a G10, that's a that's an item level, that's a, a shoe or a um, and then I have a case label, you know, uh, an uh, an SSCC, right? 
and I, and I pull that in and I now know by reading that and decoding it, I know if I have a case of something, a pallet of something or an item of something and using like the tunnel here in the, in this picture, right? I can say, I can now associate items to case, case to pallet, uh, and then a pallet tag out the door, or I can, you know, associate all those cases together and just read a few of those cases and know that that whole pallet's here, right? Um, and then with cycle counting, I can do my cycle counting to whatever degree I want to do it to, right? I can set my device up to go cycle count and say, hey, I want to cycle count to the item level because I don't know that the integrity of the case is correct, right? Um, so I go through and I say, I'm cycle counting to the item level. I don't read anything else. I just read the item level products. I don't read any of the cases. I don't read any of the pallets. Um, and that, but in other situations, we might say, hey, let's just read the case, right? Or maybe you only tag the case, right? Maybe you don't tag the, the items, right? Um, we then just focus on the case level. So there's, 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 a, there's a lot of different ways on how that works. It just depends on how the use case, uh, you know, how, the, how we're going to deploy that. Well, I think a good question that's easy uh, that I saw from Anonymous, can you connect the cloud-based inventory, uh, connect to cloud-based inventory applications? So, Absolutely, I mean, yeah. So we, right. we integrate with all the large uh, ERP, WMS systems out there um, through, through uh, you know, APIs and whatnot. So yes, that's a very, very common um, in, in every application that we have out there today. They're very good at WMS. Let them do WMS. We're gonna we're gonna handle the RFID inventory and we're gonna send them what they need. They don't want to consume that. If you talk to all those you know those large companies out there, they don't want to sit there and consume, uh, you know, thirty tag reads for an individual item, right? They want to consume the important stuff. So that that's what we we provide them, and we work very closely with them in doing so. So could you quickly touch on a couple of scenarios like we see on the screen? I I'm sure. In you know, not too many people implement RFID just for cycle counting only. Right. So how, how does that normally work? Well, what, are the, what is the initial need? And then how does cycle counting gets maybe added to that? Yeah, so, so our largest is, is shipping verification. That's where we spend, you know, uh, you know, that's where we have a lot of doctor solutions deployed. And that's saying, hey, I want to make sure the right thing goes on the right truck to the right end user, right? To the right customer or the right, you know, maybe I'm just cross docking between buildings. Or, or maybe I'm sending out to to, to my customers, right? Um, and verifying that and also alarming if I have an error, right? Hey, I put the wrong pallet on the wrong truck, send an alarm. Or I put the, um, I put something that was in QA hold that managed to make it over and it went to, onto the truck and that can't leave this building. Um, that, that, that we would alarm on as well. So, so leveraging, you know, shipping verification and receiving, right? So I create that shipment and then I receive it on the other end. And now there's, there's, there should be nothing, it should be 100% accurate between everything, right? So there's no loss in the middle. Um, and then, you know, that, that works in with that omni-channel, the, the pick pack, right? And making sure that um, I, if I tell my customer, hey, you have this order coming and I'm 100% accurate on it, they can be 100% accurate to their customer, right? Compared to, hey, I thought I was getting this, but I ended up getting 95% of that. And I, now I'm short on what I need, right? Um, so that, that's, that's very important. Um, we use the tunnels a lot in solutions where we might want to go and say, hey, I, I pick and pack to a case, um, different, you know, in retail especially, right? Different items and uh, styles and sizes. And I throw those on a, a tunnel and I, I to an order, right? The, uh, you know, like an online order. And uh, I got 10 t-shirts of, you know, different sizes and styles, do I have the right ones in here, right? I can I can do that on the fly through the tunnel. If everything's correct, it continues on. If it's not, we kick it off the line and it gets inspected. We take that over to an RFID enabled table, which isn't pictured here, where we can then inspect that box and say, hey, what is exactly wrong? What needs to be corrected and speed that out, right? So um, uh, container tracking, yes, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's probably where we started. Um, that's where, in 2010, that was what was really doable, right? Um, very, very easy, but it's still something that a, a lot of customers are just getting into. We had, we've had customers in just today um, getting into container tracking of returnable containers, and, and, and it's very straightforward, um, but you still need to have a robust solution around that, right, Be, to provide that accuracy. Um, robotics. So this is uh, this is a, <clears throat> this is something that we're um, currently working on. So SLS will be uh, releasing a product here this summer um, that will be beyond the fetch robot um, and be a 
a cycle counting device um, that can be robotic. So, you know, three, four years ago, we had a we had a robot. Nobody ever used it. Nobody ever bought it. We just had it to say, this is what we can do. We can build one, <laughs> but it's expensive, right? Um, and now it's, you know, now we're getting a lot of push towards this direction because of the the, the difficulty in finding labor and, and actually taking a material handler away from him, his job. Um, and having, you know, having him move a pallet around a cycle count. Now I can take a robot and this can do it after hours. It can do it all day. You know, it just, it, it, it just always does it. Right. So, so we, we see a lot of projects moving that direction. We're going to deploy a few this year and, and, and it's, it is a new and, and up and coming thing in, in our, in our, you know, in the RFID industry. Um, it's really getting refined right now. And it's going to, I think it's going to, it's going to provide, we're going to be able to provide much better locations to where that product is. Um, leveraging our uh, leveraging robots, so it's 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 exciting for us. It's a new a new one that we're working on. Well, and it's great synergy with Barcodes Inc. because we already have relationships and work with robotics, especially you know AMRs and similar systems like this. So this is wonderful. And I will comment that this will be the best RFID robot out there because it's going to have the best RFID readers attached to them. Um, you know, and that's I, I say that proudly and. Um, I, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, so we do want, I just want to comment. There's lots of great questions in here. Um, we want to talk a little bit about this and try to get through some of them, but just making a comment, please reach out to us, right? You know, you probably, you might have contacts who are your sales reps. Um, and you've, of course, there's contact information. You can email us. And of course we can actually talk to you, uh, one-on-one -on -one and your organizations. Okay. So, so I just want to make that comment because we are running up out of time. I'm sure many people here will have to go and, and we do want to answer your questions. We want to tell you how it works and we want to, um, address your specific concerns. And, and that actually kind of is, is part of, um, the evaluation. So if we can go back one slide just to talk about, um, you know, what, what the different things that we might do to help. Obviously, we're, we're, our processes are that we're going to have a discovery and usually over the telephone, right? We're going to find out what, what your business is like and try to find opportunities to increase your efficiencies and get you good ROI, right? On using RFID and, and evaluate that. We have a few different ways that we do that, both testing in, in, um, in the lab. Uh, you know, you, you already saw that, Matt is, is is uh, one of the people who performs some of those tests amongst many on his team. Um, we do come on site and that might be for an assessment to just see where it fits in. It might be to test, you know, we've already defined some parameters and we come on site with equipment and with tags and we, we ensure that we're getting, uh, you know, tuning everything to get the best performance. And, uh, you know, for, for, you know, going back to where we started, you know, these are these are very purpose built and proven solutions in specific areas, but we we do work to um, for unique opportunities where these um, these solutions aren't an exact fit, then we can um, come on site with with a plan to test that out using a variety of the tools that we have. So I mean, and, and, and so we, we do we have to get specific to your environment. And it starts out with a call. So please do contact us. Um, uh, if you guys want to learn more and, and see how it can benefit you. Yeah, that's great. So, and we look forward to following up with you as well to discuss how RFID can help your business. So if you would like to receive an evaluation on to discuss how RFID can improve your company's inventory accuracy and efficiency, yeah, please send us an email or complete a, a schedule request on either of the listed websites. Um, we have reached the bottom of the hour. I know that Matt and Chris are available to answer some of the questions for those that have to leave us. Uh, thanks for your attendance, but uh, we will continue just to get through some of the questions that we have. Do you want to pick them out, um, Matt or Chris, yeah. or you want me to read them through? Yeah, so I could uh, I could answer about 50% of them, I think, in one swoop here. I see a lot of questions related to, can you integrate with XWMS system? Uh, more than likely, yes. Um, we haven't ran into one yet. We could not. Um, it is it is a, that is, our software is designed to, we have a, a, a piece of that that is purpose built for that integration, right? So um, it's a very simple process. Um, it doesn't require much customization from either side. It's very much just a pass of data, very similar to how they might pass data between other systems previously. So um, if you have a specific WMS system um, that you're, you have questions about, reach out and we will definitely be able to answer that. 
Um, most of them we have anything that's W, uh, any of the WMSs like SIP, Manhattan, Oracle, uh, high jumps, uh, you know, different things like that. Um, and, and any, any other, there's, there's so many of them, right? So, um, that is, that, that is something we definitely can do. And I guess I want to just, uh, comment. There's a few questions about tags, um, asking about cost. Uh, it kind of ties in with how far can you read? And, you know, there's a variety of tags. There are labels that are pretty much disposable um, and pretty low cost that you might start out at 12 cents a piece uh, for very easy, you know, palette level labels, you know, some kind of uh, confirmation there. Uh, but there's such a variety and that goes up to having uh, more permanent labels when it's appropriate, uh, special on metal labels that are printable. Uh, there is a giant variety of hard tags. And of course, um, most of the time with cycle counting, that doesn't come up, but you might be cycle counting a fleet of rental vehicles, right? I mean, there are so many um, reasons that you might utilize cycle counting or any of these other RFID applications. So unfortunately, there's a huge variety of tags, um, I, but I'd say that 12 cents for a starting paper tag that's got a, a decent 30 foot read range, um, probably 50 to 75 cents a tag for an on metal printable tag somewhere in there. And, you know, again, no, that's not counting any volumes. Hard tags can range from a, from a buck 50 to, to $5 a tag. That's the average range, depending on how rugged is it high heat? Is it autoclavable? You know, what is the application for that hard tag? And of course, um, both of our companies are, are very familiar with all of the, the different makers in the industry for those hard tags. And SLS has uh, a line of, of, of really high performing labels that you guys, that, that are available too, that they've really tested out and really fit these app, these common applications of pallet aggregation, um, of, of uh, shipping verification, cycle counting, um, pick to pack, you know, I mean, so, so, yeah, there's so, a variety. I'm sorry, there's not one answer for that. Um, and they have different properties too, besides just how much they cost. You know, there's size sizes, and that can relate to read range, different chips, and so forth. But that's why uh, you, you come to experts like Matt and Barcode Zinc, and we 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 um, approach it by getting specific to your application. Yeah, and just to, to add on to that, like there, there one tag is not made to solve every issue, right? There's there's tags for metal, there's tags for different kinds of rubbers and plastic and different things like that. And glass. Um, we have, we have a, a you know, a, a 10,000 square foot lab here that we do all of our product development testing. One of those biggest things we do and offer to our customers is, is testing of uh, tags and, and understanding that tag on different substrates and how it's going to perform. Um, and then providing that information back to our customers. It doesn't necessarily have to be an SLS tag, right? We work with lots of the major um, tag providers out there where we can you know, I can provide you, here's five really good tags that all work really well. Here's this one, no, don't use this one um, because of a specific reason. Um, and we, we do that for a lot of our customers because it's very, very important for the whole solution, right? Um, one of the biggest mistakes that we run into out there is, um, and it's happened time and time again, is, hey, we wanted to put RFID on our stuff. We weren't ready to do the solution yet. And we just started throwing a tag on it that somebody just told us to use. Um, not necessarily always bad, but usually you're ending up setting yourself up, setting yourself up for failure, especially if you have different in, uh, you might have three different types of products, right? I might have metal racks, plastic totes and cardboard boxes. That isn't necessarily one specific tag. It's at least two, right? Um, because the metal tag is going to be different than the, the plastic and the cardboard, the corrugated um, the tag. Um, but we will always then look to find that second tag that's going to work on the corrugated and the plastic as, as consistently as possible. To design good solutions, we need to make sure the tags, if I have multiple tags because of the, the solution requires that I have to have multiple types of tags, I want to make sure they all perform very closely together and I don't have this wide band to tune to once I'm doing my shipping verification, my receiving. Um, so that is, that is the, the full solution design is really what we are looking to help with and provide. That's why you see a lot of the, uh, you know, in you know how we go about it, right? There's a discovery call, and then we're going to do an on-site visit. That on-site visit is is to 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 walk through your facility and to understand how you can leverage RFID um, technology, and then how we can also create the simplest solution because simple solutions are scalable. So that we'll always end up in that direction. 
And I can add to this that on Wednesday, August 3rd, our next webinar in the RFID series will be dedicated to tags and inlays and encoding standards. So look out for an invitation uh, later in July uh, when we uh, will let you know uh, how you can sign up for that. Is there one more topic that you kind of see coming in through the questions uh, with which we can close it up, uh, Matt and Chris? Um, can I suggest, Matt, can you talk about just uh, people really want to could you give a few examples? Because uh, there's a lot of questions about my racks look like this. Yep. Can the M800 read? Could you just talk a yeah. little bit more about performance on the M800? That would be great. Yeah. So, so we have a couple different. I'll, I'll, I'll go through a few. So, um, I have a I have a customer that does a cross dock. They bring in a bunch of pallets and they ship a bunch of pallets. At the end of the day, so they they bring in those pallets and they stage them, right? And those those staging lanes are 120 feet long, right? Um, two truckloads, right? Um, and then they might not ship everything by the end of the day. So we go around and we make sure, hey, everything that's supposed to be here is here, right? And so I'm reading in and I can only read in because they're staking lanes. I can only read in, I'm 60 feet to the closest tag, right? And we're able to read that at a high degree of accuracy in one loop around the outside and read everything. It's at floor level, right? Because that's getting ready to be loaded on a truck. Um, but I'm reading in, you know, 60 feet from each end to read that full 120 feet. So um, solutions such as that. Now that's a pallet level type solution. You cannot you do that. You with had a one solution of these. that was six thousand, um, six thousand things, items, item level tagged on a pallet, and they were six, they were sixty feet away. I would tell you that's a much different use case. Um, that would be much harder. Um, and then you know, in solutions like uh, the one where we did the, uh, the 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 case study that we mentioned earlier, right? That's uh, um, it's it's bulk packed R, um, uh, RFID enabled garments, right? So they come in from from overseas and they get put into um, you know, big, you know, Gaylords um, with 12 to 1500 um, articles of clothing inside of them, all RFID tagged. And then they're stacked nine high and they're just in lines, right? <laughs> and, and nine million of them in inventory, right? And we will go down and we will, we'll, we will read those, right? Um, and that is now, you know, in that solution, we, we have to slow the device down because we can only read some, we can only read you know, in a cycle counting situation, we're running specific read modes where we're reading about 800 tags a second. So if I have 40,000 tags in the field of view, now I have to slow the device down, but I can still read everything, right? And so so we do a lot of things there in high volumes and, and manage that data once again, so that I don't have to bombard my network with 9 million tags times five, right? I just read 9 million tags and you get one of them, right? Um, so, so, so those are some different can, solutions. Can I comment on that one? And the alternative is you don't count that inventory. No one's going right. to count yep. those Gaylords with 1500 pieces in them, yep. right? I mean, the labor cost yep. to do it isn't worth the inventory cost. So this is the only way to achieve that, you know, and that right. sometimes is what RFID enables. Yeah. And then the, 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 the last one that I would have is just racked, racked apparel, racked items, racked anything, right? Um, and then roller racks, we run into those a lot where it's, you know, the roll through racks where you get, you know, your five, six, seven pallets deep. Um, if we're reading a case and pallet level, no problem at all. Item level, it depends on what kind of items, right? So a lot of this is use case dependent. So it's not, nothing's concrete, especially with RFID, but it's a, uh, it is, it is something that we can, um, that, that's what we come on site. We will very quickly tell you, yes, we can or no, we can't. Um, because we just like you don't want us to waste a bunch of your time doing something that can't be done. Um, we don't want to waste a bunch of our time trying to do something that can't be done. We, we, uh, we'll, we'll, we're very quick to say, hey, this will work and we can do this. Um, or that's not how this can work. But there are these ways that we can go about it, right? So, um, and, and they're, they're usually in, in, in almost every situation I've been in to date, um we we can always work through a solution it's just how do we leverage everything you do today to create that solution yeah and that's a good maybe closing up so if you are interested in an evaluation please reach out to us we will uh, also follow up with you especially when you had questions that weren't answered here um i do want to thank both matt and chris for presenting today. It was very insightful and lots of questions. So RFID is indeed hitting its stride right now. Uh, thank you for the attendance of all of you uh, taking the time. Look forward to a follow-up call with you and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. Thanks.